it out. Done. We can get right into things. Sound good? Sounds great. Wonderful. Larry, come see the grenade show. Get a rubble ball turn and go. Everybody, come see the grenade show. Get a rubble ball turn and go. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Blake and Sales Show with Mark. For over 10 years, dominating the podcast world. Now sit back, relax, and get ready to have some fun. Let's welcome your hosts, Blake, Sal, and Mark. It's so in fun to see the beats to the sound of cable TV, and she'll never see the world look the same. She is a goldwater in my head. And I am responding on the change side of parts. Oh, no. I've been inside and I've fallen apart in disgrace. If this is not a test, we can't put it in the face. Hello, and welcome to the Black and South Show with Mark, episode number 493. I am your host, Blake, and I. Maybe I want to be Jason Kelsey when I grow up after this week. That's what I want to be. <laughs> Let me bring on my co-host. First of all, the biggest on podcasting, the man who I guess is still dealing with allergy issues from last week's show. I feel bad. Sal, welcome to the show. Mm -hmm. Last week it was this eye, and this week it is this eye. Grace. Hey. All right. Well, let's bring on our other co-host, the man, the myth, the legend. I got nothing catching today because we're in a rush. Mark that. How you doing? <laughs> hey, we're doing good. Hey, and what you going to do when Baker Mania runs wild on you? It's weird that it's the 40th well, Baker Mania is over. Yeah, exactly. And it's the 40th anniversary of Hulkamania this week. That was weird. That was a weird thing to happen this week. <laughs> so, talking about the fate of the background. This is off, off the new Green Day album, album Saviors. This is 1981. I, I got to listen, I listened to the whole album while I was driving around on Tuesday, and I'm like, oh, this is a good song. So I'm looking for the opening. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> so, okay. I do recommend the album. It's a good album. It's, just a, it's a shorter album than I expected. Well, shorter than I expected. Okay. <laughs> it just kind of flew by. It was like, good for driving it up. So anyway, um, let's get right into things. It's Royal Rumble week, but we also got a lot going on and a very short period of time to do it in today. So let's do this. Um, As always, go pick up Andy's book. I know I am. Available at I am on Barbara's Noble and Arnett Publish in, in English and in Spanish. Fuck them kids. And go listen to the <sighs> Mandy Show new show this morning on all podcasting platforms. And I don't say this enough, but if you're listening to this, go subscribe to our show now on Spotify. The more people that follow us on Spotify, the better it is for us. Please go do that right now. All right. That being said, let's get right into things without um, all the normal stuff we do at the top of the show. Let's get right into things. And now, let's see what's going on in the wild world of sports. I said it's Royal Rumble week. That must also mean it's conference championship weekend over in the NFL. I, I do over the – I remember the one year when the when WWE didn't look at a calendar and then they put the Royal Rumble up the same night as the AFC championship game. That happened one year. <laughs> <laughs> they have not made that mistake, <laughs> but I remember that <laughs> year. <laughs> uh, well, before we get into championship weekend, any quick thoughts on the division weekend? I thought this was another great weekend. The playoffs have been fantastic this year. Like I'm almost, I almost feel like we're in for a we're in for crappy championship game after the last week of football. I really do feel like that. The one thought that I take away from it is two teams lost when their kicker missed the field goals. Yeah, you're not wrong. You're absolutely not wrong. Um, Sal, any thoughts? Quick thoughts on the weekend? 
Um, I well, I missed the Saturday games, but I enjoyed the Sunday games. Yeah, the Saturday games were fun. Like the Saturday games were a lot of fun. Like I enjoyed the weekend. Like it was just an overall fun weekend. Um, I, I'm telling you, Jason Kelsey added that extra entertainment on the Kansas City game. It was fantastic. I, you know what's funny? I did listen to the Kelsey Brothers podcast today because I did listen to the show. And mm-hmm. him explaining that was hysterical because apparently he told his wife he was going to do that. She did not want him to. And he didn't listen to his wife and just went out and did it anyway, <laughs> which might just be one of the funniest things to heard out of the whole story. And apparently that was the first time he actually met Taylor. Yes. Um, that, though that's yes. a circle on its own right, too. Like, yes. That whole thing is funny to me. <laughs> so and and, I, also, uh, I also like the fact that they asked Travis on the field because obviously Travis couldn't see anything from the field. And they're like, I'm not surprised whatsoever that he took a shirt. <laughs> like, I'm not even surprised. <laughs> That's amazing. You, you know, there's rumor that Jason may or may not have been drinking, but oh no, no. It's that, not that, a rumor. rumor. It's not a rumor. He was drinking. He said that on the podcast. No. He was, no, no, I can tell you straight up. He joined the Bill Mafia in the parking lot. And in the video of him drinking a shot out of a bowling ball. So that thing that happened. So <laughs> anyway, what's yeah. I, I, I'm sure this will not scare off Taylor. I, apparently she loved him, according to what I read her this morning. She loved him. So well, there you go. So her opinion doesn't matter. Fuck Taylor Swift. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Now we gotta get like we gotta get one of those uh fuck Taylor Swift. Uh, little, I just little... played it. I literally just played it. Oh it fuck didn't Taylor come Swift. There you go. All right. I'm too busy making a joke. I actually pressed the button. <laughs> ah, sorry. Um. Anyway, let's get right to the N- the NFL championship weekend. We have two games, obviously, over in the AFC. It is the Baltimore Ravens and the Kansas City Chiefs. I was just time all together. And in the NFC, it's the San Francisco 49ers and the Detroit Lions. We'll go around who's winning this things. I- I'm. I know South going to be so pissed at me right now, but I hate picking Kansas City. I want Kansas City Detroit. In the Super Bowl, but I also want the Detroit to win Super Bowl. So, like, I'm in that weird boat where I want I'm the, yeah. everyone to win Super Bowl this year. I really am rooting them on. So, <laughs> um, that's where I'm going with this. Um, I know what, pick your teams and then pick your Super Bowl winner based on your picks because we're not going to be here that weekend, that week. So, um, Sal, you next. Um, are we, we're going to do both picks. Yeah, or picks because we're not going to be here. We're not going. We'll do both games and then Super, who's in the Super Bowl because we're not going to be okay. here. Go so ahead. So, obviously, I, I said I would love to see Detroit make it all the way. And uh, I feel like, I mean, it's probably going to be Kansas City, let's be honest. But um, who better than to have another hard-nosed city like Baltimore to face a hard-nosed city like Detroit? <laughs> or the battle of who the hardest who the hardest city is to Live in. <laughs> that, that, um, I, you really had to, to cut, figure out how you're going to send that sentence off because I was not sure where you were going with that sentence. <laughs> <laughs> um, so between Baltimore and Detroit, I mean, um, and if I'm not mistaken, they well, now Baltimore has won before, correct? Yeah, Baltimore beat the Giants. Yes. Baltimore beat the Giants back in 2001. That's right. And then Detroit has never won. Detroit has never won a Super Bowl. This is, not gonna be, this is the first okay. time the conference game. It's like I forgot what they said, but I saw a graphic the other day where they explained all the things that happened since the last time Detroit was there, and it was like free iPods and free like social media and free Google. Like it was absolutely hysterical. <laughs> when I read it. <laughs> wow, it's been a while. Um, yeah, uh, I, I I would love to see Detroit win. I think it would be very uh, poetic considering they had such a terrible season. Uh, what the year before that, or oh, years ago? The oh, 16, yeah, that was sixteen year a few years back. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So, yeah, that's that's my pick. I yes. gotta go with Kansas City and Detroit, and like you know, I'm going Detroit because I believe that Detroit's do, and they're hungry, and they're gonna prove something to Kansas City. As Mandy always said, if they're hungry, go make a sandwich. And Mandy always said. Oh, I am going to add, if it is Detroit and Kansas City, we're going to have another Taylor Swift versus Eminem feud. And uh, we remember the last time when Eminem completely embarrassed her. So we can Taylor Swift. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think Eminem has matured since then, so we'll see what happens. 
Well, I don't really worry about that. We'll worry about that in a couple of weeks if that actually happens. But you know, and if that happens, the NFL is going to go fucking crazy. Like, they're going to go fucking crazy. <laughs> but, so, I don't have the graphic yeah. I was thinking of, but I didn't find it. The last time the Lions played in the NFC Championship game in 1990, 1992. Holy oh, crap, man. Batman. And I do have a list here. This is interesting. And we'll, and we'll, get, we'll get to wrestling. But number one movie, the number one movie was Terminator 2 Judgment Day. <laughs> Good movie. Number one, the number one song with everything I do, I do it for you by Brian Adams. Oh. <laughs> wow. Derek Andrew led the Legion with rushing touchdowns that year. <laughs> um, MC okay. Hammer, the Hammer Dance was popular. You mean yes. the wonderful parachute pants? Yeah, and 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 gas was a dollar dollar fourteen a gallon. God, I miss those days. Wonderful. So that, so that was the last time. So like, I just had that graphic, and I'm on that full on Fox and Instagram. <laughs> so, wow. all right. That being said, let's do this. And now let's get into the crazy world of professional wrestling. Well, but it, it's funny when we originally, when I originally was running out this run sheet, I'm like, oh, it'd be an easy show. We got the Rumble. Rumble doesn't have many matches, and then and then the, one of the big stories broke. Like, cool. And then we'll then we'll make fun of the um the, the new game covers and all kinds of stuff. We'll have a little bit of fun. Damn it, hell, they had to put up some actual news this week. But so, <laughs> but first things first. Um, New Japan announced that Kazuchika Okada will be leaving the company after a contract expires on January 31st. Somebody please get, please say. Get him in the rumble. That'd be amazing, but but just not. But I I will do my fucking mind if that happens. But um, he will be finishing his dates in February, no matter what happens. He has three dates in February, but he contract will officially expire on the thirty first. Mm-hmm. Um, there's word going around. I've heard literally multiple stories telling me two completely different things. Saying Tony Khan, Tony Khan's offering the biggest contract. Triple H, um, Triple H, Paul Beck wants him in WWE. He's going to WWE. That's happening no matter what. No, no, no. I keep hearing this. I have no idea what's going to happen, but I'm very intrigued. Um, Stella, tell me from the from who's not the New Japan person, but you know Okada. Your thoughts on this whole thing? Um, the Great Bidding War of 2024 is now with Okada. <laughs> yeah, my, who saw this one coming? Who the hell said anybody have it? <laughs> I would laugh if he like winds up in like TNA. <laughs> oh, oh <laughs> hell no! Let me say something. I'll let me say something. You know what's funny about that sentence? So yeah. I told you guys I was gonna last week's show. I said I was gonna subscribe to TNA Plus because I wanted to watch the next two weeks' shows because right, right. well, last week was on last week's show. Was Okada's on this week's show, mm-hmm. and I haven't obviously when this episode airs, I will have already seen the show or I will be watching the show depending on when I get home from the store. So, oh, depending on when I get home that day on Friday when this show drops. Okada's on the TNA Impact this week. And he was on last week's show cutting a promo. And I'm like, this is so weird for him to say he's in TNA. It was one of the strangest things I've seen in a long, long time after all the shit that happened with him the last time. So that was very, very, very strange. <laughs> but um, anyway, uh-huh. your thoughts. Um, all I can say is Whatever company basically has the best offer for him, and I'm sure it's going to come down to flexibility and how many dates he's going to be wrestling. I see Paul basically basically taking him from going to AEW by giving him something that Tony can't give him. WrestleMania. There you go. I, I, more, <laughs> more. I, he's gonna get more exposure going to WWE than I think with AEW. And I, and, and if Paul explains it that way, I think it'll be good for him. Um. Also, keep in mind that Tamatanga just dropped this belt and said his goodbyes to New Japan. That doesn't mean so, anything to this belt. That doesn't to do with Okada. That no, but I'm just saying, each other. just in the in the back, in the back of your mind that he's there. So. I will say, by the way, there was another today. I haven't watched, looked at the results yet, but apparently the um, six man tag titles were on the line today. And Okada should have dropped those belts today. So that also was going on today. So right. we're in the middle of the Okada farewell tour in Japan. So that's what's going on. So one other thing I want to know here, one other thing I want to note that I read. So okay. for those who don't know, Okada's wife is a massive actress in Japan. 
We don't know her in the States, but in Japan, she's massive. Like a massive mm-hmm. star. And she actually, apparently, the um her community out there mm-hmm. is, is actually putting out there that she's moving to the States. And if she's moving to the States, that means Okada's going to WWE. Yeah. But AEW will let him stay in Japan. No. So, there's yeah. that. Yeah. So, and if his wife comes to the States, there may be more opportunity for her oh, to okay. get in the movies over here. TKO. Oh, okay. Absolutely. Yep. Absolutely with TKO. But, yeah. um, so, and, and Sal's taking your work thing, so we're just solid in it. But, um, okay. that's, I, I, I'm intrigued by that alone, that it might be a situation where he, um, he comes to the States, works with WWE, and we'll see what happens. I, I said, if he, if that coin dropped at the Rumble, I'm going to lose the fucking mind. I will lose my mind. Because here's the thing. Paul can give Okada his WrestleMania moment and basically set up a program where he's going to go against Roman Reigns for the belt. I, I wouldn't go that far. Here's what you do. Nakamura dropped the word chaos in a promo recently. Yes. Nakamura, Okada, WrestleMania. Are the two best friends fighting yes. for the fun yes. of it. Let them do it yes. and then move on. Do yes, okay yes. now. Now only did I say that but you can't draw Okada into the Roman Reigns storyline right now with The Rock okay. and Cody both there. You can't okay. do that right now. You can't. Not with The Rock so, and Cody both there. So here, here's the other thing you mentioned with Chaos. Do you have a faction uh, Chaos that goes against the Judgment Day? Um, I don't know. I don't know. I I don't even want to see that. I want to see Okada by himself, but I want Okada. And Nakamura to have a match, and if they do it at Mania, that would be fucking amazing. Oh shit, yeah. Even if they not they're not going to go full blast like they used to, I think that match would be fucking amazing. Can we have Red Shoes come in and referee for one night? That would be that would cost money. That, I don't think they, well they have it, but I don't think they want to spend it on Red Shoes to fly in for a match. <laughs> I don't think they want to do that. Hey, you never know. Paul sweetens the pot. Christ. Um, but we'll find out more. When that moves drops, we'll let everybody know. Um, so the so what's going on with WWE for their big, 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 big news that broke yesterday. Oh, yeah. I cannot believe that Chase U is closing on NXT. Kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Yeah. But actually, really it's happening. But anyway, no, we're wrong. WWE Raw is moving to Netflix. Who the hell saw this one coming? Um, in so Jan- not my bingo card. I should been close. January 2025, they're going to Netflix. Um on a 10-year, $5 billion, and I say billion, billion, billion dollar contract. That's an insane number. Um, now, here are the details of that. So apparently, Netflix had a out clause after five years. But they could also extend this contract to 20 years. So things have changed. Things have changed drastically. Um, and then I also heard from Nick Khan that SmackDown is moving to Tuesdays when it goes to the USA Network in October. So that's another thing. But the big deal, SmackDown Raw going to Netflix. Wait, the, this October? October 2024, SmackDown is moving back to back, back, oh, okay. moving, October 2024. SmackDown moves to USA and NXT moves to the CW. So Raw is the first one to move. No, Raw is the, the last, last one. Raw is the last one. one. Yeah. But that's the interesting part is that, and so that's so. Sal, your thoughts? Netflix, WWE, holy shit! What the hell? Um, does that mean it's going to be commercial free? You know, I would love to know that. I want the option. At least I want the option, like Peacock has. Like I want that option because, like, I, I want to have the ability. Like, I would love them to do something where, like, there's two tiers for, like, for instance, Sal. When you watch pay per view PLEs on Peacock, you get commercials. For yes. us, we don't get commercials. We get like the right. weird WWE packages. But what I would love them to do is like you have to go to commercial during a match or something, right? Mm-hmm. The people on the lower tier get the commercials, but people in the upper tier get the commercial free match. Like they do right. on TV for AEW. Mm-hmm. That's what I would love this to do, personally. So there's so many questions. There's so many questions on this one. Um, yeah, there's so many. I wrote actually. I wrote them down. I, mean, I wrote down all these questions actually yesterday, so I remember to actually say them on here. Let me just find my list. So, I wrote down. Yeah, that's the one question, question I've got is: Is this Netflix's first venture with 
live streaming events? It will be the first venture in weekly live streaming events. Okay. They've done four live events, and one of them went really badly. <laughs> one went really oh, badly. Oh, that was that reunion thing, right? Oh, that was lion thing. But that was the first one they ever did. And if you're going to get your kinks out, you get, you get your kinks out. Remember the WWE Network when it first launched? The first yeah. NXT live event was a clusterfuck. So yeah. I remember that. The first NXT live event. Like, I remember that event because we were watching the show, and for 10 minutes, we had a feel at Tyler, at Tyler Breeze's entrance. Frozen on the I have a minute. I have a question. So, do you see when the peacock thing ends? Do you see them moving everything to Netflix? Good question. It's a very good question. Because I can give you an answer. I don't have a full answer, but I can give you a partial answer. Um, so, part of this deal is it, this is not just a U.S. deal. This is international. And mm-hmm. like in Canada and the U.K., all the PLEs are moving to Netflix. Right. So I have a feeling, like you said, in 2026, if the Peacock deal runs out, Netflix will snatch up the PLEs and bring them over here and everything will be under one panel. That's mm-hmm. my opinion. That's how I think it will happen. Okay, so... That would make sense. That would really we, make sense to me. Right. Are, are we also including the large library that WWE has? That's a great question. That's a question I don't have an answer. That's not a question yeah. I have an answer to, but I do have the ELE question because only because this is happening internationally. So, um, the other question I I actually wrote down my questions and a couple of people already answered, but like, if like if I would love to know like, is the show going to be shorter? Is it still going to be a three hour show? Are they going to knock it down to show will be as long as we need it to be? Or if if it if, if it's like it doesn't have to be three hours, it could be two and a half hours, it could be two hours. Be two or fifteen minutes, depending on what's going on that week. If a promo goes long, like this past week on Raw with Cody and Punk, the promo mm-hmm. went long, and the match after that got affected by it. Do we have to have that problem because there's no hard out? Like so, the questions I have. Like, those are okay. questions I want to know the answers to. So basically, we have it's unknown as far as time limit constraints. Well, trust me, we'll find out more as we get closer. You know we will be. Okay. We'll find out more as we get closer. Those are the questions I have. Here, I'm curious how that works. Here, Here's my other here's my other question regarding this situation. Is this gonna cause AEW to move their events to Max? Well, I've heard a rumor that in twenty that something they're they have a, they still have negotiated their officially you know, I think you're they have been waiting. Um Warner Brothers Discovery has been waiting to see what WWE does. And then also they were also waiting on the NBA because the NBA hasn't been confirmed yet. Because so, the NBA might be leaving. What about the NBA? The NBA contract expires soon with the Warner Brothers Discovery, and if like ESPN offers them an exclusive contract, they're going to leave TNT. When does that happen? Um, this year, soon, like very, very like, after, like at the end of the this, season. After this season, this is the last season of the contracts that are going on right now. The NBA is currently in negotiations right now. So that's a big deal. So if the Warner Brothers Discovery loses the NBA, much more money to go to AEW, in my personal opinion. Because now with, with this news, I'm wondering if that's going to speed up the things that are happening with Max and, and, and Bleacher Report and things of that nature. I think where, where they're had- going to be the first one to do it. Me and Seattle have had this discussion before. That if they were smart, in the new contract, they should move everything over to Max. Move pay per views, everything over to Max, and have the show replay over there. Do everything mm-hmm. over at Max. We've had that discussion many, many times. Right. And we've been waiting for them to do it. But again, we're waiting for this, this their, their contract extension to officially get announced. They haven't done it yet. So we're waiting on that announcement. And hopefully, part of that announcement is pay per views on Max. Because that'll save all of us money at the end of the day. Like, yeah, it's getting a little ridiculous. It yeah, really because... is. Like, I, I actually am appreciating the fact that they don't have a pay per view until March. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. Like I'm appreciating the fact that well, you only have the Rumble, and then the Chamber, which is. By the way, Sal, isn't the time slot for the Chamber yet? Isn't the time slot mm-hmm. yet? Yep. Five a.m. Five a.m. Your time. Yep. <laughs> I was like, oh my god! Well, Set funny, your alarm. Well, funny part is about that show. I'm not obviously not going to watch it live. I'm not getting up that early on a Saturday. It's not happening. But <laughs> Andy is traveling that day, so. I'm going to drop her off at the airport. And then 
I got to bring TJ to Sylvan for his food drinks. So I'm just going to watch the show there. I'll just watch the show there. I'm like, oh, computer, I'll just watch it there. Because what, what does it matter? Like, what the hell does it matter? <laughs> I think I'm going to watch it. Uh, I think I'm going to watch it either. No, I'm probably going to watch it Sunday. I'll definitely watch it Saturday. I just don't know when on Saturday. Because mm-hmm. I don't like, theoretically, I mean, I work that day. And I could just pretend that I'm going into the office and I would wake up at 5 a.m. anyway. Fair enough. If I really wanted to, but yeah. I kind of want to pay attention. So I'm not going to watch it. <laughs> no, while I'm, I'm with working. you. I'm with you there. I also yeah. don't. The only time I, I, I don't even get up early for Wrestle Kingdom. I'm not going to get up for Elimination Chamber. I'm just saying, honest here. Like, next year, Wrestle Kingdom is on a Saturday. I'm not getting up to watch Wrestle Kingdom. There's no way in hell I'm going to get up to watch Elimination Chamber. Like, what's <laughs> Especially when we know Rock Roman is not happening on this show. Now there's really no point in making a better like, yeah, no yeah, yeah. Chairman of the board. Oh my god. Um oh yeah, the other news that came out is now that Dwayne Johnson is now on the board of TKO and now he owns the rock name. That was the other thing that happened yesterday. I'm that was, happy about that. That's a big I'm deal. so happy about that. Thank God. Like that's a big deal. Like that's a bigger deal than people realize. Like I don't think people realize how big of a deal that is. Like, Did you guys I, see the there was a picture of McMahon, Rack, and Paul. Well, that was at the stock market. That was at the stock right, market. Right. They, they rang the um, rock rang the bell. Right. Yeah. And did, rushed in peace to you, that creepy mustache. I know. I was he say, you look, you looked at McMahon and he dyed his hair jet black. He's I know that, his... he's been like that for a while. He's been like that for he came out of hiding. After yeah, but it was so his mustache was so distracting, not a lot of people realized it. <laughs> well, no, when, he, when he came out of hiding after the full retirement last year. Mm-hmm. That with the mustache, with the mustache, the creepy mustache started. Right. Well, now to add someone the who has yeah. fucking sexual sexual allegations against them, why the fuck would you do with a porn star mustache? Like, why would you do that? Well, <laughs> no it, sense. It looks like he's trying to grow the goatee to go with it too, but I think it's a bad attempt. It looks creepy. It looks creepy. <laughs> it looks super super creepy. He 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 looks like a freaking. Okay, I'm gonna say it, and I'm probably gonna get chastised, and I don't care. He looks like a freaking chomo. I said pedophile. Close show I was close. I was close. I said pedophile. <laughs> Don't worry. I won't Wait, what's a show now. No one I played that clip. Don't worry. What's a show now? Child molester. Oh, I never, never heard that. Have you never heard that? I've always, I've heard that forever. No, I've never heard that. Before. I have always oh heard God. that. I've always heard that. Hey, oops. <laughs> So I'm, I'm not going to lie. I'm very surprised. And the episode is going to be called And really? I Learned Something Today. Pedophiles and Tromos, there you go. Uh-oh, Mark is going off on a tangent. (laughs) Here we go. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. So anyway, what's, um, I guess, this is going to be the shortest pay-per-view preview of all time. I just want to say that right now. This is going to be the shortest one we've ever done. (laughs) Because there's not a whole lot going on. So, it is Royal Rumble weekend. We have the Rumble on Saturday on Peacock. And um, the theme of the hate review is the Black Keys, Wild Child, which the music is playing in the background currently. I didn't even know that was the theme until literally an hour before the show. Uh, <laughs> did not know that. Because I didn't recognize the song at all. And they didn't talk about it on Raw. Usually they promote it on Raw. That's usually when I write it down. They didn't promote it on Raw. So... I thought I was out of the room when they did that, because I did leave the room for like 10 minutes during the show. So I, I, I missed it. <laughs> but, <laughs> that would be your luck, too. That would be my luck, because I missed that. It's right in my notes. I didn't figure it out until today. But, so, can I just... And I've been praising Paul Beck for this. Can I say, I love short cards. I'm loving these short cards. We have a four-match Royal Rumble show. <laughs> The way it used to be. Well, for now. For now. Well, they, well they, the problem is, you can think, you say for now. Well, Seth Rollins is obviously not wrestling on the show. Oh, yeah, I forgot to bring up Seth Rollins. Seth Rollins um, announced on Raw that he had a great two. MKP. Well, I'm going to time. I'm going to time. Good point. Yeah. Where was Seth Rollins? He had a Seth he, he was not on this show. Um, He had a grade two MCL tear. And they say he might, he will need surgery, but he's choosing to not have surgery. Because if he has a surgery, he'll move to WrestleMania. So he's choosing rehab. And I remember feeling he's going to end up dropping the title at WrestleMania. And he'll have the surgery after that. That's my personal opinion. 
Yeah, he's he's wearing the brace and doing the rehab. Yeah, I have a feeling that's what's gonna happen there. But that's but that, here, that's the big news. Here's the strange Spoiler thing. Spoiler alert. Here's the strange thing. Gunther challenging him. That was surprising. Oh yeah, Sal, ah. Sal, you missed Gunther and Seth's promo. That was amazing. Oh my lord. No level did I expect Gunther to look to be in the ring with Seth and come off as a bigger star than Seth. And no level did I see that one coming at all. All Gunther was interesting. You know how you know how we always say don't yell in a promo. We always say that with a heel, and it, 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 we always talk about Jacob Saint Robert. It was the best at staying calm. Things mm-hmm. Gunther did that in the most melodical way I've heard in years, where he just stayed <laughs> calm and just said right to Seth's face, "I respect you. We're both longtime champions, but I'm going to beat you for your title." I'm summarizing it, but it was a fantastic. To the point, and also said, "I'm not here to attack you." Imperium had the match tonight; they're not going to attack you. This is what I'm doing. I'm just going to go right to your face and say this. I'm like, "This is the craziest thing I've seen in a long time." I, I did not expect that from well, him. What was the other thing? You think, I, I, I want you at your best or near 100. percent Yeah, like I thought I'm, it was I'm, great. Like I thought it was great. I, 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 but he, but he really he just directly to Seth, "I'm going to attack your back. I'm going to attack your knee." Yeah. I thought it was so t- a great promo from Gunther that I did not see coming. Oh, um, and he, the legitimate heat that came off the crowd. Holy cow. It was well, well done. So that's that. The other thing, obviously, as Stalin mentioned, um, Kevin Patrick is out as SmackDown, um, SmackDown announcer. Matter of fact, the reason I forgot to write it down because I literally just went on WWE to see if they announced any announcing changes yet, and they haven't announced anything yet. So that's actually literally what I was doing, and that's why I didn't write it down. So... Yeah, we're doing anything else but that. This KP will not or be. KP. Yeah, he's not doing anymore. I, as I joked to dad, just trade Vic and KP for now. <laughs> put, Vic, put Vic on SmackDown with Corey. Because Vic and Corey are like best friends. And then we'll go from there. You know? <laughs> Somebody made a note that, uh, what's his face? Um, good old JR still hasn't re signed with AEW. Is that true? He hasn't. He said that. He said he hasn't re signed yet. That came from everything. And from- now KP is out. <laughs> I don't think he, I don't think so. I don't think that's gonna happen. You have a better chance of Mario Ronaldo coming back than I think Jr. If, if, <laughs> if Jr. would be coming back, I think it would be at WrestleMania. And even if he came back, it would be on the a legend thing. He's not right. gonna come back and do a full show. It's actually no. I think I think Paul Levesque has too much respect for Jr. to bring him in as a full time guy. Well, this year Jr. has had some health scares, and yeah. I think. What I mean, yeah, yeah. So you want to basically make his schedule less than more? I think he. So. I still think he would have been perfect to do like the network stuff, like him and he, him doing like these sit down interviews or setting up stuff for the network. I think that would have been amazing for Jr. Oh yeah, like, that kind of stuff. And they can still do that when they move over to Netflix. You know, I mean, they can still do stuff like that. Uh, so. I was joking. I was joking with Blake that basically you could put KP with Booker on NXT, but you'd have to have a translator. It basically translates Booker to English and KP to English to speak. I Booker. try not. I you don't. So I try my damn because literally when I watch NXT and I said this on the show, I shut my brain off to watch NXT because it's such a ridiculous show. Sometimes like, it's just nice and relaxing. It's actually nice and relaxing to watch NXT. It's just no stress to watch it. Like there's not really a whole lot going on. It's a lot of good wrestling. There's, it's like a college atmosphere. Like it's a nice laid back show most of the time. But there are nights. Like this week show where I'm literally Booker last two last two Tuesdays Booker has been in a mood to the point <laughs> where even Vic snapped on him. Vic even snapped on Booker. Oh yeah, like it was that bad the last two weeks. Like, <laughs> well, what was one was comment bad. Vic said to Booker? Oh, Roxanne Perez came out. Yeah, there's your girl. And he goes, "What do you mean it's my girl?" You literally you hugged her when she won the title. Oh, you trained her. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> about he, it. He gets all defensive now, and it's like. Hey, you know what? <laughs> Move the curtain. It's unveiled. You know, everyone knows that you you had a hand in training her and saying, developing her and all this. Like, you know, so the only thing I'm enjoying with Booker is him sticking along with Trick Williams music. That 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 makes me laugh. That makes me chuckle every single time. But like, <laughs> music goes, he's like, yeah, uh huh. Like that that cracks me up. That's really very funny. <laughs> I am waiting. I am waiting for the day that he basically comes out on the mic and kind of walks down the ramp with him doing his little thing there. 
I, I'm the funny part is I don't know how many people in um fucking um full still even know he's doing that. <laughs> like that's the funny part about that for me. Like, and and a surprise that I didn't see coming. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> Whoop that trick. <laughs> that happens every week. I know that every week sounds so funny. <laughs> that was funny every time. Yeah, Daddy was saying something. Sorry. And the surprise at NXT. Surprise! There was the surprise. person that came out of Shawn Michaels' office. Wasn't it a surprise? Oh, William Regal. William Regal's back on yep. TV. And mm-hmm. that's just, I think that was just for the pop. And for the transition to GMs. I don't think it means anything. I, don't, I literally mean it means nothing. No, he's, he, he's here ba- basically to... Hypocrite. His son. Why is he a hypocrite? Why is he a hypocrite, Sal? It is, it is wrestling. He's a client of Carney. How is that a hypocrite? Hypocrite. How is he a hypocrite? Tell us why. Because he didn't want to be on television and I, on AEW. No, 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 no. That's not what happened. He was told he could not be on TV for a year. That was in his contract. The contract is now over. No, I'm right. not a hypocrite. And basically, he's like, I, 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 want to answer that question. I want to answer that question. Go ahead. How is that being a hypocrite if he followed what the law was in his contract? But he was saying that when he was an AEW, yeah. he did not want to be on TV. He's a carny. How did you believe him? He's a carny. <laughs> <laughs> like, let's be honest here. He's a carny. He's a pro wrestling carny, like everybody else. It's like when you were in, we, we, you weren't on the show. With um, were you on the show with um Kelly? With Punk came back. Were you on that show? I don't think he was. Yeah, I don't think he was that actually. show when um Kelly was here after Punk came back, and he literally like told people like oh. I do not believe and know that he that this is how Punk is. He's a carny in the car in a carny world. We go literally a carny in a carny world. Like, okay, here's our title for the program: Hypocrites and Chomos. I'm not going to the title of the show. That is not happening. That is not happening. <laughs> so, all right. What's actually now? We've been gone through all the other stuff. What's next to the Rumble matches? What's next to the Rumble? We have two. We have two title matches and Rumble matches. So, what's the title matches first? We talk the WWE, WWE United States Championship. It is Logan Paul defending against Kevin Owens. Um, is this his first title defense? First title defense. <laughs> That's pathetic. <laughs> Fucking <laughs> pathetic. Let's see who Sal hated today. <laughs> We're hey, adding yeah. Logan Paul to that list, I take it. <laughs> Not the first time. <laughs> didn't he, wait, didn't he trade that to somebody for, for something? Patrick Mahomes! Like Carter or something? <laughs> Patrick Mahomes! <laughs> or, yeah, yeah, for a Super Bowl ring. So is he defending the Super Bowl ring, or what? He's defending the title. He's defending the title. I will say, though, Logan Paul. Logan Paul. We love making fun of Logan Paul. We, and I do. I love making fun of Logan Paul. But I gotta give credit where it's due. He at least now knows that he's a full out heel on WWE TV and plays a full out asshole on <laughs> WWE TV. Like he 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 was on the KO show last Friday. And him being such a prick is perfect. Like he's such a prick. And it works so fucking well. So basically he plays himself. But I give him credit. Black Pepper, I've heard he's not as much of a prick as he comes off on television anymore because he apparently he grew up since he was a massive prick. But like he knows that everyone hates him. So we just say, fuck it. Everyone hates me. I'm just going to be hateable. I'm just going to be the biggest asshole I could possibly be. And I think well, he's, he's getting paid for it now. So why not? Exactly. Like I can't blame the guy for it. Like it can always be easy play off of him. And, 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 and the same time, I'll, I'll still pimp out my product. That a KO was amazing. I played off him. Um, after after SmackDown, Mandy looked at me and said, okay, I was winning this, right? Um, no. Yeah. No, he's not winning this, unfortunately. Uh, Logan Paul retaining. Um, not with Mania right around the corner. I, I have, I, in my, in my listings, I have um, LA Knight versus Logan Paul at Mania. So, that's what I personally see. I, I, I'm the, I'm a, this is my personal pick. I don't have rumors or anything. I'm just going by my personal opinion. Okay. Also, I'll drop something. LA Knight was on Chris Van Blue's podcast. Um, a couple, like last week or two. I, I mean, just we dropped like four shows a week, so I don't know when the fuck the episode dropped anymore. Like I still <laughs> drop anymore. But um, LA Knight was asked by Chris Van Fleet, "Would you like to face Logan Paul at WrestleMania?" And LA Knight could not answer that question, which means to me that match is happening at WrestleMania. 
What's happening right now? <laughs> I'm I'm more geared to Ray coming back at WrestleMania and beating Logan Paul. I, that's not a bad movie. No. I, I don't no. think it's I don't see it happening. I think LA Knight needs no. a WrestleMania win and beating Logan Paul is perfect for him. You know? And watch, watch we're all completely wrong on something completely different. I was going to say, but would Logan Paul really drop the title on his second defense? Well, it depends. If he's going, if he's going to defend the chamber. Probably not, let's be honest. Who knows? Who knows? It's international. Maybe he wants to be international. I don't know. Club. Oh, Ooh. that's true. It is in a different sure, country. It's it's Perth. In a lot of Perth. Yeah. Perth. Yeah. And yeah. I think eventually that show is going to probably be Rhea Ripley versus somebody. Like, I, mean, eventually I think that... they already confirmed that it's going to be her. Yeah, obviously, mm-hmm. like she's on a yeah. poster and everything. It's her, it's her show. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I, I would, I would not be shocked if Logan Paul goes out to Australia and defend him, especially if since Roman's not. Yeah, I'll be shocked if they don't have Logan Paul go out there and defend. Yeah, um, take note, Emma. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you just confirming with Logan Paul? Is it confirm? Yeah. I- I- I, I, I gotta say with hesitation, yeah, I gotta go with Logan Paul, even though my heart says KO. But I know yeah. I my my heart says KO. I love KO, but I just not not this match. You know what I mean? Not in this match. Uh, undisputed WWE Universal Championship: Roman Reigns versus Randy Orton versus AJ Styles versus LA Knight. Um, can I just say something? That right Nick Aldis is fucking amazing because Nick Aldis. It's calling Roman Reigns and Paul Heyman out on their shit now. He's calling them out on the show on their shit. Uh. Which is fantastic. Like, it's so, it's so the opposite of Adam Pierce. It's literally the opposite of what Adam Pierce used to do. Mm-hmm. Like, to the point where Roman wouldn't come out to sign the contract at the top of the show, and Heyman came out and said, We haven't looked over the contract mm-hmm. yet. Well, the other three had already signed it. So Nick's like, Fine. I guess the three of them are going to have to def- we'll be fighting over a vacant title. Oh, oh my. Damn! I didn't know. Wow! Oh. Okay! All right, Nick! Cool! You're, you're calling him out the shit! Nice! Done! Cool! Oh, okay. Yeah, so you that's put a him in, in, you put him in check. Yeah, so, um, that's the thing. I, I I would not be shocked if, like, down the road in the summer, we have Roman Reigns versus Nick Aldis, the way they're setting things up on SmackDown right now. That would not shock me. I, like, I would, would not, not, I'm not talking about title match or anything, but I would not be shocked me if, like, at SummerSlam, they decided to do that match. Like it wouldn't yeah. shock me at all. <laughs> but yeah. I think all the grand Romans is retaining. Who's he pinning? That's the question. Who's he pinning? Uh Randy? No. AJ. I, I think he's gonna pin LA Knight again. I have a feeling he's pinning LA Knight again. Because you don't <laughs> you don't pin Orton. You're not gonna pin Orton. If you're gonna pin Orton, just make a one on one match, put AJ and LA Knight in the fucking rumble. If you're gonna pin Orton. Like, <laughs> like the whole reason is a four way so that Orton doesn't get pinned. They got the whole reason is the four way. <laughs> yeah, but what if he pins Orton and then it sets up a uh, another feud? Fair. Fair enough. Fair enough. But either way, Roman's retaining. That's obvious. I, I am. I'm going for it. AJ gets pinned by him only because the rest of his defunct faction comes in to help him, and instead of helping him, it hurts his chances. Oh yeah, Sal, you don't even know the um the, the clubs. Mm-hmm. The um, the um, AJ and the Good Brothers are in, are not on best terms right now. Oh. He's doing the whole like lone wolf thing now, so he doesn't want to yeah. be doesn't want to be aligned with them anymore. Right. So that's interesting. Okay. Well, they suck anyway, so that's fine. I know, but it's cool though. I like the, the, the uh, I think it was Rich Fan said perfectly that AJ Styles is playing the lone wolf character from that he did in TNA when he turned heel, but better, but better <laughs> this time because he's older and more mature and actually knows what he's doing in this time. You know. Right. No. All right, let's get to the Rumble matches. Um, women's match. By the way, people on here are literally the only people they've announced. It's literally all they've announced at the Rumble. Um, oh. Rumble match. Bailey, Nia Jax, Becky Lynch, Bianca Belair, Maxine Dupree, Ivy Nile. That's all they've announced. And if I, I've said this pick for the last four years. <laughs> I will not change my damn pick until she finally wins the damn Rumble, and it's going to be my girl, Bailey. I am not changing this. I will not change it. I said it for, I've been saying it for years. This time I'm gonna be right. I'm gonna be right this time. And it's you sure be, about that? It's gonna be you and Bailey at WrestleMania. I that is what I'm saying. I'm saying uh, that until I'm wrong. Sal go. Um I'm gonna say just because and I have no clue, but um, um what's her face? 
to trade her from AEW. Why can't I think of her name now? Jade Cargill. There you go. Jade, yeah, Cargill. Jade Cargill. I'm saying Jade Cargill is going to win. They're traitors when they leave and then their contract expires. I love that they're traitors. Like, their contract yeah. expires and they leave. Like, how would that be a traitor? <laughs> oh, he's a traitor. I, I'm he's surprised you didn't say Trinity Fat too. I expect her to be. Her ass ain't winning. Please. I, I expect her to be in the Rumble, though. I do expect her to be in the Rumble. I, I expect her to be in the Rumble, too, but her ass ain't winning. Yeah, just because he officially dropped the title. And yep. they had the rematch already. They already had the rematch. So, like, he's done. And speaking of hypocrites. <laughs> I'm always. No, I. I, I never mind. I'm not, you keep getting on this whole thing with hypocrite, being a hypocrite. I, I think he was a follower. I think he followed Sasha out the door. I don't think she even wanted to leave. I think he followed Sasha. That's what I think happened. I, Which is a hypocrite for crawling back. Oh wait, do we see Sasha? I mean, I I don't I don't see Sasha to me. In the, I honestly don't see Sasha being this match personally. I don't see it. No. You? I don't know. I don't see it personally. No. Honestly, if I do, I'll be surprised. Like honestly, I'd be very surprised. Not 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 yet. Yeah, I just I don't see it at all. I actually don't see her. All depends on what they're doing in AEW. I think all depends on if they say you're going to be our main event star in AEW, and you're going to be like main eventing with Diana Perrazzo and Dom um, Tony Storm. Then she's going over there. If they don't give her that deal, then I expect her back in WWE. I, and that's how I see it. If she comes back to WWE, I, I I'd say bring her out for Mania. I have a feeling that if they're going to bring her from, if you do it at the Rumble, it's because she's coming out to stay Bailey from Damage Control. Right. That's what I have a feeling that that's when we're going to get her. And I think that'll be night after WrestleMania stuff. You don't do that till then. That's night after Mania debut. Yeah. So then, like, right. Bailey's, or SmackDown after Mania, whatever you want to do it, where, Sm- where Bailey's the champion, <laughs> and then Damage Control turns on her officially, and then Sasha comes out to help. Right. That's how you do that debut. That's how you do that return. Mm. <laughs> anyway, Dad, did you pick which, Rumble? Which pick... Snoop Dogg singing the theme? Why not? Sure, why not? That was fun. <laughs> I, love this. I love that entrance music. I'm not going to Snoop Dogg singing the entrance music. I really do. I'm going to go and have a pick of Bianca Baylor winning this. Second Rumble. Uh, and then no, Bianca, not again. Bianca turns heel. No. And, and, and the problem is, their... I was with you on Bianca turning heel. When the prophets and Lashley were heels, they're no longer heels, and her, their rea- and her and Montez's reality show starts next week. So well, like, it starts, it starts on Hulu. You're correct. No, no, actually, they start. They're dropping all the episodes at once. It's still like you're dropping all the episodes at one time. But not the point. Not the point of what we're saying. I don't see a heel turn happening. I also don't see Bianca winning. I think Bianca will be in the final four, and I see her being eliminated. Like surprising elimination, one of those. Oh, she's like you can hear Cole already saying. I can see, I can see Bianca being in the final four, like eliminating Becky. Even she's like, oh, there goes her top competition, and then her being eliminated by Bailey. Like I can totally see that happening, and like Cole being. By the way, I want Bailey to win the Rumble to piss off Cole, and for Bailey to brag in front of Cole's face. I want to see that so <laughs> fucking bad. <laughs> I just thought about that. I just had that thought in my brain. I really oh, happened. Shit, man. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Okay, we'll get to the men's rumble. And now so you have a lot more people than oh, a lot of people now, but more people. Um Cody Rhodes. Fuck Cody Rhodes. CM Punk, Shinsuke Nakamura, Bobby Lashley, Drew McIntyre, Gunther. Right, Dummy and Priest. Right there. That's a fantastic rumble lineup. Just with dull people alone. You know? yeah. <laughs> Kofi Kingston, Tag Gable, Otis, and Akira Tazawa. So, I'm sorry, but Cody Punk, Shinsuke Lashley, Drew Gunther, Damian Priest, right there is a fantastic, like <laughs> For you for the rumble, like that is fantastic. That is stacked right there. <laughs> it doesn't even include the rest of the roster, and that's already stacked. <laughs> God damn, that's a great rumble. <laughs> right there alone. Okay, it's a lot I'm trickier gonna... for me. It's actually a lot trickier for me. Dad, you can start. Go, go. I I'm gonna put something out there, and only because this person hasn't been seen for a while. Sheamus makes an appearance at the rumble. Okay, I like that. I like Shamey's returning at the Rumble. And by the way, I by, by the way is... if Shamey's returns at the Rumble, I want his old theme music back because the Brill and Brutes is no longer a thing. Correct. And I, I, I want think, his old theme music. And I want Shamey's to win. He's not going to win the Rumble. He ain't going to win the Rumble. Come on, He's man. This is, this is kind of like... Can I remind you of something? Go ahead. Who's facing? 
Steph or Roman. Those are the people they're facing. Like, if you didn't mind when you're making your pick, and those are the people they're facing. Right. right. And I figured, okay, Sheamus wins, and he challenges Seth, and he gets the belt from Seth. So you're, so you're going to ignore the fact that Seth is currently in a feud with CM Punk, Gunther, and Drew McIntyre. <laughs> you're going to ignore that. You no, you just add one more to the I'm just one saying, like, you're list. literally going to ignore the fact that he's just, oh, and one Andy more Brace. And Andy Brace. Like, it's literally going to be with four people on his show. <laughs> and you're going to throw that out the window for sure. So, so then we'll, we'll have another four-way match. I'm just saying, like, I just say how ridiculous that sentence is that you're going to throw out a, 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 just, four different guys. I'm, I'm just saying because basically, <laughs> I, from what I understand, this may be Sheamus' last hurrah. I don't believe that at all. He's been, I've been hearing that. For and if it is, he doesn't need a title. He doesn't need to win. He doesn't need to win this. Showing up in the Rumble alone will give him a massive pop. Everyone will be happy to see him. Let's be honest here. Everyone will be happy to see Sheamus. Because it's been a while since we've seen him. The best because that was old theme music. Like, that'll get such a pop. Yep. You know? Because like I said, the Rolling Brutes are no more. Because um, Pete Dunn's now hanging out with Tyler Bate, and you know, Rich Holland is down in um, NXT finding himself. So, like... <laughs> Breaking more necks? No, he's just finding himself now. He's in a feud with Gallus finding himself. Didn't he hurt somebody else now? No, no, that was a storyline. Oh. That was all storyline. Oh, okay. okay. But that was a storyline. They were actually they used his history in a storyline against Ilya to put off Ilya versus Trick until um Judgment Day. Oh, oh, Judgment Day, Day. Day. So Day. Day. They, were, they were trying to put that match off so they used Rich Holland's real life issues to injure Ilya Dragunov to yeah. push that match till the till the heel eight. Okay. That's what they did. That's what they did. So he didn't actually hurt anybody for real. So just, okay, just, good. Yeah, <laughs> that was literally a storyline. So anyway, let's get back to this. Um, Sal, who's winning the rumble? Um, I feel like we're getting a finish the story part two. Ooh, ooh, okay. So I feel like Cody's gonna win, but then go after Roman, and it would be a good opportunity to get Cody off of Raw before it moves to a non-channel station and keep them on regular cable. I, I did not expect you to pick Cody. I'm not going to lie. That one surprised me. I did not expect you me to pick Cody good. either. You got me good on that one. I didn't expect that at all. That was a nice surprise. <laughs> Fuck Cody Rhodes. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, me. So, see, now, I, I'm, see, now that we have the lineup in front of me, I'm looking at the lineup in front of me. Uh-huh. I'm down to three guys. Cody, Punk, and Gunther. Those are my three guys that I'm down to. Okay. You want um, to add four or not? Uh, I'm hitting. I, see, when, I, when, when the Rumble was. When the, when, before, when this whole thing started back in the beginning, of, right when CM Punk debuted at Survivor Series, mm-hmm. I said, I said it on the show, and I know I said it to use that one to actually happen. Oh, there's our there's a winner of the Royal Rumble. There it is. There's our winner of the Royal Rumble this year. Mm-hmm. Um, what throws me off a little. Is now that th- is the rock that throws me off. Um, what throws me off is um, the awesome promo that it was Cody and Punk on Raw. By the way, Sal, if you've not seen the promo, go out of your way to find the promo. It was fantastic. One of the best. I like, think I did not expect it. It was unbelievable. The two of them kind of put a fantastic promo together in the ring together. Um, so, and my brain tells me it's obvious Cody's winning. That's what my brain tells me. Like, it just says, Cody's winning back there when they wouldn't keep bringing it up mm-hmm. that no one's won back to back rumbles since Stone Cold Steve Austin if he wasn't winning this as a back to back rumble. Right. And tri- and as we learned at last year's rumble, Paul Levesque d- loves breaking records. As we learned last year, you know? I'm going to go with my gut and I'm going to go with my gut and add a CM Hunk to win the rumble and made event against Seth night one and made event night one against Seth. Boo. Even though I prefer to see Gunther face hey, Seth, I'm not gonna lie, I kind of prefer to see Gunther. I, but and I also I wouldn't even mind them if they did like a, a, a dad joked with Stamus. Like I wouldn't be shocked with Seth injury if they like said, well, "Yeah, Punk win the Rumble." Mm-hmm. Gunther challenged him, and then you do a, like a triple threat. You know what they should have done? The Seth injury. The Seth injury. <clears throat> you know what they should have done? That they should have. Forced Seth to drop the title, and made the rumble for the title. I, I've heard, oh, that, I've heard wow. that idea. I've heard that idea. 
Yeah. Other thing I threw out, and I said this to you, where they should have had a cash in on Monday. They should have had Priest win the title. I well, yes, they yeah, that too. Done. That's what they should have done. And, 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 then there would be no break in the lineage. Because remember, right. it's, one thing that people are forgetting: Seth is the first champion of this belt. Do mm-hmm. you really want the, the lineage broken already? When you have the cash in option, you have the cash in option. You can cash right. in. If, if, if this, I think if the I think if the injury was more serious, they would have done the cash in option. Honestly, I think that's what would happen on Monday if they didn't. If the, and, if it was more serious. And and here's the thing with uh, Damian Priest's uh, little um, case there, he doesn't have to win the rumble because he's oh, got. No, I agree. That, I agree. Yeah, he's got that in the back of his. You know. Also, you know what he reminds me of? You know what his thing starting to remind me? of? remember Edge when he first held the money in the bank. Yeah. And they were trying to push away the main eventer, but mm-hmm. they kept putting him in title matches anyway, even though he mm-hmm. had the money in the bank. And he kept having a window on one contendership matches and all this kind of stuff, even though he didn't need it. And he and, and remember, I remember they said, remember Ed cut a promo one time, he's like, Well, of course I have it, but if I am a number one contender, I can just hit him again. If I lose, I'll just hit him again. They have the money mm-hmm. in the bank. Right. Here. Like that is Damian right. Priest logic right now. Like if he wins if he's logically he said it on Raw, if he wins the rumble and he loses, he still has the case to catch in right away. Is, is there emphasis? So that's fair. Like that's fair logic. Right. I mean, is there emphasis because Priest has that as a backup with money in the bank? Is there any emphasis on splitting him from Judgment Day or not? Somebody threw out a funny theory. Uh, I'll, I'll throw this out there because um, now you, you didn't watch Rob what Monday, right, right, Rob? Right, Sal? This past Monday? Yeah. No, I was at the Devils game. Okay. Well, yeah, you were at the Devil, Devil's Vegas game. But um, they, they had a segment where Priest. Was talked to, was talked to, was being talked to by um our truth, and said <laughs> not now, and truth actually listened to him. Oh, he actually oh. listened. He actually listened to priest. <clears throat> oh, it didn't really work okay. that well, but like that moment happened, and I'm like, is they doing something here with truth and Damian Priest that eventually maybe they'll do a match with priest and truth versus the Judgment Day down the road because priest is not pulling the trigger on truth. And he's amused by truth. Like, are they doing something like that? Like, it feels like they, they might do that. Like, that's what it feels like. Like, based on what they're doing on Monday. It, it, so, would you say that truth is like his voice of reason? Almost like, or maybe it's his like good, good angel on his shoulder. I got it. Okay. Trying to turn him, trying to be a good guy. Kind of like, 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 like a conscience. Exactly. That's what it feels like. So, like, I expect like truth to be in the Rumble and like, him to have some like him and him and priest and even like Balor has been here to have some fun in the ring. Like I expect that in the room. Like, I expect that. <laughs> and in a that's the case, I see JD McDonald eliminating truth. Like I expect things like that to happen. Like, I, I have a suggestion. Rumble, I'm gonna be pissed. Like I'm not gonna lie, she's gonna be pissed. Like, I, gonna be pissed. I have a wild suggestion. Ed. It just came to me. Can we have our truth win the rumble and like god. go after the intercontinental title or something? My god. Have <laughs> yeah. to put money in the bank then in July and have to do that. Like do that then instead. And since wasn't it the rumble was that's gonna be so stacked with so many <laughs> possibilities of WrestleMania? Like the year that um at Bert, no, no, was it um was it Del Rio that he won the rumble and it could have been Santino that one year? Yeah. Like if it was like that kind of rumble where it wasn't so serious that we didn't have a shitload of storylines going on, then you can get away with that. I think mean, you can totally get away with that if it wasn't so much stuff going on. Here's no the other thing. Truth wins the rumble and he picks his championship. And he wants a 24 7 title. My God, he brings it out of the trash. <laughs> he takes it out of the trash. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? We can't top that. And I think we're done. Everyone got their picks in. Let's get out of here because we don't already have time and we do have. Do have to get out of here today a little earlier than we normally do. So yeah. let's um let's hit this. And Dad, what are we closing in the show with? We're closing with a song that I've heard that basically sticks in my mind. It's a new song by Craig Morgan Luke Combs called Raise the Bar. Fair enough. Fair enough. So let's um let's get out of here. Sal, take it away. Uh for more information on our show, including where you can find us on social media or watch the show on YouTube. Go to the and please, please, please don't forget comments or leave a rating and review and we will read on show 
Yeah, I have to actually put in the note now that Spotify goes, you can go well on Spotify, you can follow the show, and you can actually leave comments there as well. Sometimes I'll put questions up to like, I might just say, who do you pick? Who do you pick to win the Rumble? And you can comment right there, and I'll put the post on our social media. There you go. Like, I'll do stuff like that. That's the, the thing. Go. Hey, as always, it's been your pleasure. And please, if you have a local independent wrestling organization in a city or township that you live in, Please patronize these people. These are young men and women that are coming up in the sport of professional wrestling, sports entertainment. They want to show you what they're able to do through their training, their gimmick, their promos, the whole package in order to get into that brass ring to a major wrestling organization. And they need you to be there to show them that they can do this. So please go to these matches, but act responsible and have fun, and but don't be an asshole. That sounds fair. Um... So the next couple of weeks are not going to be normal weeks for us. We, um, I'm in the middle of Clerks Minute recordings, and it's my anniversary. And then my anniversary is coming up in two weeks, so I don't want to do a show that way. So next week, uh, me and Sal will be doing a special NHL draft, NHL All Star Draft edition with some special guests. I'm really excited to do this show. We're recording it early, and I'm looking forward to that show a lot. So is there going to be a team that basically, hit, you know, when they draft, and they get the next draft picks for the next twenty years? No, what we're doing is we're literally going to draft our teams from the All Star based on the All Star rosters because we're having a draft next Thursday. So, like, we're literally going to do our own draft on the show. That's what we're doing. So, that's what we're doing. Um, and the week after, it's going to be an archive show. So, the, the next two weeks, it's not going to be normal for us. But enjoy what I'm putting up. Um, that being said, let's get out of here. I'm Blake. I'm Sal. I'm Mark. And you've been listening to the Blake and Show with Mark. Have a good day, everybody. Hey, we love you guys. Be safe. Be kind. Why? You whine? You do. <laughs> <laughs> See ya. Thank you so very much. Goodbye. Mwah. And good night. Bye bye, bitch. Ha ha ha! Fuck them kids. <laughs>